the Blackbird I have driven, um, I've driven it on a 90 mile just test trip, round trip, 45 up, 45 back, and I've done that a half dozen times. I did it a week ago once I finished all the engine work that I wanted to do. And today now that we're done, literally everything is done other than that radio antenna now. Uh, there's nothing left on the car to do. But um, if it wasn't raining, I would maybe take it out today. I filled it up with gas. But if you want, why don't we just review from Edmonton all the way to the Arctic Circle and back. So in Edmonton, the idea, we leave the car show on a Sunday morning early. Probably get rolling by about 5 on a Sunday morning. It's uh, by the end of July, you'll still have, not at Edmonton, 24 hours of daylight, but you'll have 20 hours of daylight at Edmonton. And as you head north, it'll get better. So if we leave Edmonton at, say, 4.30 or 5 in the morning Edmonton time, uh, our goal that day is Fort Nelson. That's a long leg. In theory, it is paved. In practice, there will be construction and there will be gravel sections and there'll probably be some other stuff. The other thing, for the first 100 miles, it's kind of boring. It's just kind of open prairie and, you know, there's some small towns and stuff. But after a while, you start getting into beautiful mountain vistas and it'll slowly get rougher. You have some great looking bridges. Um, but that's to Fort Nelson. Now that's where the forest fires are between Edmonton and Fort Nelson. Right now, they're all under control. We'll see where that goes. When you leave Fort Nelson, you are within, uh, when you leave Fort Nelson, you go about 60 miles, I think it is, to Fort St. John. I could be totally wrong. I'm doing this in my head. You have, no, Fort St. John is after Edmonton. Sorry. When you leave Fort Nelson, our goal from Fort Nelson is to get to Whitehorse. That's the longest leg of the trip. It is the most scenic leg of the trip. Uh, we will get from, uh, Fort Nelson is in British Columbia. We'll get from there. We'll eventually get into the Yukon Territory. We'll stop at Watson Lake Sign Forest and probably 20 to 30 more times for pictures, breaks, views. We will start getting into the mountains. Uh, animals, uh, you'll start seeing a lot of them. Uh, what I found from Fort Nelson North, for quite a while you have uh, moose issues. Uh, moose crossing the road, uh, and I know I had one emergency stop in 2022 with a moose and her calf crossing 100 yards in front of me. It wasn't a lock them up stop, but it was a hit the brakes through a hard stop. Um, but there's so many places to stop. Now, what I am taking, because of, of the issue last time I stopped on the highway to eat lunch, there's nobody up there. You got rivers running through there, so I pulled over. I, I carry a camp chair with me, which you will, will throw some in the back of the truck. And I was eating lunch and I just sat there for two hours except the mosquitoes. So I have two mosquito hats and two special long sleeve shirts and do, you're not going to have shorts. Do not wear shorts. Uh, you can wear them at first, but not after a while. When you get to White Horse, we will be exhausted in White Horse. Uh, the plan is I will drive the black car as much as humanly possible. Uh, if it breaks down or I get totally exhausted, we'll pull it on the back of the trailer and let me have a break while you guys drive the truck with the trailer for a while. But I don't think that'll happen. I've, I've been able to do it by myself before. And then we stop the night at Whitehorse. From Whitehorse north, there's nothing. We will be driving from right Whitehorse all the way to Dawson City, um, which is about 20 miles further than where we need to go. But that's the only city up there with a hotel. Spend the night in Dawson City where we're going to have the frozen toad drink. That's Dawson City, Yukon Territory. That's where, uh, as you and I were talking about, uh, they have a drink with somebody's amputated toe from frostbite. And uh, they put the toe in the glass. They fill it with booze. And you, you drink it. You and I are going to have that drink. Um, and then the next morning, the original plan was we would drive from there to Inuvik. That's the Dempster Highway. That is 700 plus kilometers, or set in a U.S. measure, 450 miles of gravel. And it's bad gravel. And it's washouts. Um, it's, gravel. it's shale gravel. And that's why, A, extra spares. B, I'm going to use some of my old stupid tricks from being an old man. 
I'm going to lower the air pressure in the tires uh, from the 36 that it's got probably down to 26, 25. That keeps the shale from cutting as much, and we're going to keep the speed down on the gravel. Since we've been unable to get the cars wrapped and clear, uh, lower speed will help us on flats. It'll help us on cracked windshields and, and flying rocks. There's not a lot of traffic. As I like to say, you may go four hours and see nothing, and then you may have six cars in a row coming towards you. Problem is a lot of them are semis and they're driving fast. The advantage, nobody tells you this, is you're driving a wing car and they see you getting way over. Those truckers, two thirds of them will slow down, honk, wave, look, because they see what's coming at them. I mean, it's not hard to recognize. It's kind of, what is that? What is, oh my God, it's a super bird. That's what they do. So originally we were gonna stop for the night in Inuvik. Uh, Inuvik is the Dempster Highway. Well, the last, it's 89 miles from Inuvik to the Arctic Ocean. Uh, Arctic Ocean is in Tuk to Yaktuk. Well, if we'd driven to Inuvik for the night, why don't we go on to Tuk to Yaktuk? That's dirt, the last 90 miles of dirt. Uh, but there is a hotel there, it's not a hotel, it's called Smitty's Bed and Breakfast. I think we'll spend the night there. Uh, get all the pictures we can. I have a couple of personal requirements. I'm gonna drink that frozen toe drink. And the old fat ball guy is going to get in the Arctic Ocean and I'm gonna turn up my favorite heavy metal song. It's called Inagata De Vida. And I'm gonna turn that sucker full blast in whatever I can get it in, whether it's on your phone or in the truck radio or whatever, and let out a couple of big loud bellows as a last fierce, yeah, we're still doing okay. And at that point, once we've reached the Arctic Circle, I no longer feel the need to drive that car any further. We're gonna load that sucker on a trailer and haul ass back to Jeffersonville, Indiana. And it'll take seven to eight days to drive back. And there's the trip in a nutshell. I did wanna mention one other thing. On Thursday, June 13th, I'm not sure when this will be posted, hopefully uh, in the next day or two to our YouTube channel. On Thursday, June 13th, we are hosting here at the Jennings Wing Car Shop the Mopar leg of the Hot Rod Power Tour. Ryan Brutt does it, the auto, auto archeologist does it, and he calls it the Mopar Tour, I believe, and we're hosting it here at our shop. And what we're gonna do, because our business is a lot of video and internet stuff, is we're gonna have all of us working here, myself, uh, our shop manager, Matt, our video director, Jason, my son, Ryan, uh, my buddy Mike, who you may have seen in some other videos, we're all going to be here working. But I tell you what I'm excited about is if you go to our Jennings Wing Car YouTube, we're going to set up a 360 degree 4K camera and live stream the Mopar Power Tour visit to the shop starting at 7.30 a.m. Thursday, June 13th. I think that'll take care of everything. I hope you guys are able to log in Thursday, June 13th, Jennings Wing Car YouTube channel. You probably won't hear from me until I come back from Alaska unless the guys post something, not Alaska, from the Arctic Ocean, unless you're coming either to Carlisle Nationals or the guys post something while we're driving up there. Hey, for all of us here at, at Jennings Wing Cars, I'm Bob Jennings, and to all of the guys that you don't see very often, thanks to them and thanks to you guys. See you again next time.